I have something that I call my golden rule. It goes something like this, do unto others 25% better than you expect them to do unto you, the 25% is for error. The best way to have a good idea is to have lots of ideas. Satisfaction of one's curiosity is one of the greatest sources of happiness in life. Science is the search for the truth it is not a game in which one tries to beat his opponent, to do harm to others. We need to have the spirit of science in international affairs, to make the conduct of international affairs the effort to find the right solution, the just solution of international problems, and not an effort by each nation to get the better of other nations, to do harm to them when it is possible. I believe in morality, in justice, in humanitarianism. The way to get good ideas is to get lots of ideas, and throw the bad ones away. The best way to get a good idea is to have a lot of ideas. Do unto others 20% better than you would expect them to do unto you, to correct for subjective error. I am not, however, militant in my atheism. The great English theoretical physicist Paul Dirac is a militant atheist. I suppose he is interested in arguing about the existence of God. I am not. It was once quipped that there is no God and Dirac is his prophet. I think that the formation of, DNAs, structure by Watson and Crick may turn out to be the greatest developments in the field of molecular genetics in recent years. If you want to have good ideas you must have many ideas. Most of them will be wrong, and what you have to learn is which ones to throw away. Everyone should know that most cancer research is largely a fraud, and that the major cancer research organizations are derelict in their duties to the people who support them. Do not let either the medical authorities or the politicians mislead you. Find out what the facts are, and make your own decisions about how to live a happy life and how to work for a better world. During the time that Landsteiner gave me an education in the field of immunology, I discovered that he and I were thinking about the serologic problem in very different ways. He would ask, what do these experiments force us to believe about the nature of the world? I would ask, what is the most? simple and general picture of the world that we can formulate that is not ruled by these experiments? I realized that medical and biological investigators were not attacking their problems the same way that theoretical physicists do, the way I had been in the habit of doing. If a doctor isn't up on something, he's down on it.